This competition is designed to recognize, encourage, and inspire our cadets. Hello, I am Colonel Paul Willis, Director of Army Instruction for Jackson Public School District. You're going to hear from the top cadets in our program. We want to use these cadets as inspiration for all of the nearly 2,000 students who are enrolled in Junior ROTC. And the cadets you're going to hear from this morning have worked their way to the very top of the group. They represent our best hope for the future. And when you see them and hear from them, I think you will agree that our future is well secured with the young people like these who are matriculating through our junior ROTC program. We have assembled a panel of educators, business leaders, and military leaders to evaluate these cadets and grade them on various components that are part of the competition. Sir, Cadet Major Lee Jerry Comfrey, before Hill High School, Jerry T.C. The mission of JRTC is to promote young people to become better citizens. This program as a whole has just inspired me to help other people be the best that they can be and to help them get to where they want to be. The most recent camp I went on was JCLC. It was a summer camp at Camp Shelby in Hattiesburg where we had to build a team bond to where whatever task that we had, we had to work together in order to complete, in order to complete the goal. I wanted to become a robotics engineer. And through these camps, the robotics camp, the multiple STEM camps that I've attended at JSU, they will help me achieve my goal in becoming a robotics engineer or computer engineer. JRTC as a whole has inspired me to become a better person. I just love the fact that I wear the uniform. It makes me feel proud and it inspires me to do more, to get more rank on my shoulder, to earn these different things that you see on my uniform today. I noticed that you have an interest in robotics engineering. You can actually work at a, like a Toyota manufacturing where robotics and STEM ties into all of that. Through the different robotics camps that I've been to, they've all stated that through this camp, if it was your passion to become a robotics engineer, you would no doubt get a job or internship at Nissan or any of the other um, car manufacturers. Can you give me an example of a you know, some of the knowledge that you gained from Jim Hill and your JROTC. So being with JROTC helped me build my self-esteem in order to talk in front of board members or people that I don't really know. What is the most important aspect of leadership to you? The ability to take responsibility and to take action for what you have done and being able to lead others, guide them through, guide them the right way and make sure they don't stray off and head down the wrong path. What is the last book you voluntarily read and what did you get out of that book? Slaughterhouse-Five. Everybody is not going to be who they say they are. So you have to stick to your gut and make sure you hang around the right people. The first African-American who graduated from West Point is a gentleman by the name of Henry Osian Flipper. Describe for me what you think that he had to endure at that time in order to graduate from West Point and why do you feel as though you have the capacity in order to enter the military academy and actually graduate? He had all this weight on his shoulders, but I'm pretty sure he didn't give up. He worked hard and did what he had to do to graduate from West Point. And me being the same way, I'm not a person to just roll over and just give up. I'm gonna do whatever it takes to attend, to make sure whatever I do is correct and make sure that everything I do is worthy of having my name on it. Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Alexis Smith reporting for the Cadet of Year Board. In preparation for life after high school, JRTC has taught me many values. Amongst those values is leadership, loyalty, duty, respect, self-service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. Integrity. To me, to have integrity, that means to not go against your morals, all in general. You don't want to allow peer pressure to ever be what pushes you over the edge. Personal courage, to have personal courage, that means you're willing to stand above everyone else and be who you are, even though people may go against it. JRTC has always taught me, through the creed especially, that first off, I do not lie, cheat, or steal. Just like having personal courage, that changes your life because it keeps you to where you can make sure that you believe in yourself if no one else does. When you become governor first, how will you influence legislators in the state of Mississippi 
to change the state flag. This deals with emotional intelligence. I have to have the people's ideals on it first. So the people will be my first go-to. I wish to speak to them to understand how they feel. I'll get down upon a level that's understanding from the people's point of view and my own and explain to them how this flag has to be changed in order for us to showcase equality amongst the state. First off, great poem. It couldn't be done. The fact that you know it and you put it in your portfolio, how has that poem impacted you? With the poem, it couldn't be done. It was taught to me by one of my AIs. He used that as a way to teach us that no matter what comes your way, you can do it. It doesn't matter what somebody tells you. It doesn't matter that somebody says that you can't do it because of the color of your skin or the fact that you're female or the fact that, in general, people don't look your way. Every day when I go to school, I use that as a reason to keep pushing. And what would be your vision to improve this organization? By me gaining this position, I'm hoping that this is an influence towards the peers at my school in general. I think it's been two years since the last brigade commander came from Lanier High School. It's to prove to my classmates that you can do this. What is the most critical uh, or important aspect of leadership? What would it be to you? Being a servant leader. How can you lead if you have not been led yourself? I can delegate. I can participate. But in the end, I can't do that if I have not learned myself. What are some of the things that you use to um, fight the peer pressure because you do realize it doesn't stop when you leave Lanier. Before I left the house, my dad asked me two questions. The first question is, what are you? I am an American. Who are you? I'm a Smith. That means I can do whatever I want to do. Not what somebody else is telling me to. That grade is more important than a party. I can go to a party any other day of my life. Just because one person's doing it doesn't mean you have to do it. Because that alone can be a downfall, a slow downfall for you and everyone else around you that looks up to you. When you become President of the United States, what steps will you take to remove that glass ceiling that prevent women from receiving equal pay or even getting the job at all? Women are getting more and more powerful in the United States. They just have to look at it and tell themselves that they can do it. In my speech to be President, I will make sure I mention that. I mention that just because you're a woman does not mean that you have to stand down. Whomever you choose, make sure they understand integrity and personal courage. Make sure they understand perseverance especially. Make sure that person will be there. Make sure when they commit to this that they stay with it and they remember to be dutiful and obligated to what they've applied for. Today, Lieutenant Colonel Kelsey Ford, the battalion commander for the Merrill High School 2nd Battalion. Best of the best, better than the rest. Merrill Mustang is hooked. Cool. And how has JRTC prepared me for successful living after high school? It's only after you stepped outside your comfort zone that you begin to change, grow, and transform. Change your attitude, change your perspective, and change your mind. Not only was I just a cadet on the drill team, I am now the drill team commander. And because of change and growth, I am able to transform. What is leadership? The generic definition of leadership is the ability to influence others to accomplish the mission. But the Mustangs add by providing purpose, direction, and motivation. Purpose. Knowing that someone is watching you and you're doing right even when no one is looking. Direction. I have three fathers now because of JRTC. Major Robert Morton, Sergeant First Class Joseph McCray, and Sergeant First Class Reginald Chambers. They have motivated me. They have moved me to where I am now. They have helped me with college applications and et cetera. Motivation. Knowing that I have three instructors behind me that are willing to aid me in every endeavor and willing to support me. Motivation. I have seen things, I have done things, and I have been places because of JRTC. I was able to go to Mississippi State STEM. I have been to MOWW Youth Leadership Conference, and there, there aren't too many people that look like me. But yet and still, I was top female cadet. And this past summer, I was able to go to Girl State. Every cadet in the JRTC program is required to do a JRTC personal skills map. And from ninth grade, it measures emotional intelligence. Uh, it also measures self-esteem, and it measures how you communicate. Now that I look at my scores now, I see that my self-esteem has skyrocketed. Last year at the military gala, I was able to be the mistress of ceremony. And I only had that opportunity because of JROTC. Developing interpersonal skills, which aids you in having a professional lifestyle. Building the attributes of a scholar, athlete, and a leader. As a scholar, I'm a part of the National Honor Society. I have a GPA of 4.24. And as a leader, I am the
Monroe High School Second Battalion Battalion Commander. I am the Jersey Commander. I am the JRTC Color Guard Co Commander, and I have been the JRTC Battalion Executive Officer, and I also was Student Council Sophomore Class President. I plan to help the program that has made me who I am and who I am about to become. Leadership is very important. You, you touched on it. You're learning a lot about it in JRTC. Many facets of leadership that are very, very important. I think the most important is being able to get a positive outcome for both the learner and the person that's leading. You said you were timid at one time. What was the transition there? Because you are not timid. Motivation. Sergeant Chambers, who was my lead one instructor, he told me, he said, we got a drill team. There's inspection, there's exhibition, all types of parts. And he said, come to practice. See if you like it. If you don't, you don't worry about it. So he said, you're going to be on exhibition. You're going to learn it. You're going to do it because you can. And also speaking at the military gala, speaking at different conferences, and also being part of the Youth Media Project, uh, also known as YMP, has helped me. Social awareness and relationship management, which one for you stands out as it relates to you moving on in your future? Self-management. Being able to control my own thoughts and to be able to think for myself is very vital. Did you know that Murray High School is the alma mater of one of the wealthiest men in the state of Mississippi. His name is Jim Barksdale. If you were to have a conversation with Jim Barksdale about why he should partner with JROTC, what would you say to him? Because investing in JROTC is investing in everybody's future. The future leaders of this world are at Murray High School, are at Lanier High School, all seven high schools. So investing in JROTC students is your best bet, is your best option. What steps are you able to take to mentor your peers about um, them developing confidence and true beauty? The main thing, self-respect and self-love is important. For me, it's my relationship with God, it's my relationship with my family, and knowing my worth. And whatever I want in life, I know that I can do it. Helping females is, is a challenge. So just sitting down and talking and trying to understand listening more than just hearing. My name is Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Tony Terry from Callaway High School, and today I will be presenting how has JRTC prepared me for life at the high school. It's basically gave me the skills in teamwork and communication. It's also gave me a chance to meet various people, go to different places, and get things that I would basically learn in life that I would be able to hold on to. I am a part of the Trendsetters Mentees. I'm a mentor to second graders at the North Jackson Elementary School. We work with them on their coursework from reading all the way down to math. I also attended Boys State. We have all gentlemen from across the state of Mississippi to come down and learn more about the government and to become part of something that's way more than ourselves. Jackson State Nanotoxicity, we had a chance to work in a STEM field. Battalion Commander's responsibilities. I provide the vision and the direction for the battalion staff. I also ensure that the staff members are capable and they are understanding their obligation to the battalion commander, the executive officer, and the cadets. I am also responsible for the battalion's overall mission, core values. Duty is unquestionable. It is the role of a leader and of a teammate to do their designated duty. It is a moral obligation. Personal courage is placing faith in everything you do, knowing that you can overcome all things. We have to have respect. It's treating people as they should be treated. In order to obtain respect, we must give it. Communication. My four years in Jersey have taught me the value of communication. An example, briefing a small review board, getting up in front of cameras, j representing Jackson Public Schools finest. Teamwork. The Jersey program has shown me the value of working with others. Being a part of a team has taught me how to look at the situation from different perspectives. Divide the authority amongst my teammates. I might not have a strong suit in one thing, but somebody else would. My community involvement. South Central Youth Federation Outreach, Orion SDA Church that's located in Hazelhurst, Mississippi. College Grove Nursing Home, our service learning project. The proud 4th Battalion has always gone to Cottage Grove. We gave them the opportunity to talk one-on-one -on -one knowing them, to actually establish a connection with somebody who has laid the foundation for us. Reflections. Me making top three lit cadet that's going to Mississippi Valley State University. William Carey's STEM University, well, it was a STEM camp that I met Mr. Ben Minifield, who also taught me the most valuable thing was to relax, where we all learned how to work in the medical fields and learn how to establish a medical career. My ATU experience, which I had a chance to 
learn how to do teamwork exercises and trust exercises. I would have never made it this far in my career without my sister. She was the battalion commander for Hazelhurst High School. She had put so much determination to her program, it made me do all the things she did. A dream doesn't become reality through magic. It takes sweat and determination and hard work. Colin Powell. But the main thing that helped me form this bond was being part of JROTC. How can you mentor young men to be more respectful to women? I've learned that everybody's not on the same page. But at the same time, everybody has to be respected. You must always have that output of saying that you will be the bigger person and that you will continue to move on even if you don't respect me. What, what is a good team player? I take a simulation animation class. You have to work as a team to achieve your, your overall goal. You have to. You can't do the one-on-one. -on -one. You can't do, I'm the man. No. A team can get multiple things done at one time. Because once you take and lead by yourself, you begin to leave out your teammates. And you begin to not give out the proper authority or the proper help that you might need or they might need. What would be the, the most important aspect of leadership? Would be listening. I can't do anything without listening to my staff. Does your staff do that, what they got to do? Yes. Do you listen to them? Yes. Everybody calls me Colonel Brown Jr. at school. I work just like my colonel. I like to get it done. But I'm appreciative to the people I work with. You have to give vision and direction yes, to sir. your staff. And you know the selection process here is going to determine who the brigade commander is. It would be to make sure that JPS is on top. I also had a chance to have a, it's called a TAC training. We went in with four battalion commanders from my high school. They had seven of their battalion commanders and their brigade colonel. They used that as a test to show that they wanted to see how far we was willing to go out there. And I showed with my school and for my school district that I had more pride in what I did and I didn't care where I came from, but I was going to show that JPS was on top. I wanted to be seen as a leader. I wanted my community to be seen as a beacon, a shining example for Jackson. What book have you voluntarily read, the last book you voluntarily read, and what did you learn from it? The book of Frankenstein. The true meaning of the Frankenstein story is knowing how far would you go in science. How would you use media to tell a different narrative of African American boys and men? I would show men like how President Obama has become. We need folks that will strengthen the African American cu culture that we have. Focus around the main points of those people's lives. I'm Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Saporia Harris from Wingfield High School. And this presentation is about how JRTC has prepared me for a successful living after high school. I bring you greetings from Wingfield High School, Principal Roderick Smith, and Senior Army Instructor Lieutenant Colonel Kenzie Wallace. Our vision at Wingfield High School is soaring to new heights by creating knowledgeable leaders. Our mission at Wingfield High School is to improve attendance, behavior, and curriculum knowledge. The mission of JRTC is to motivate young people to become better citizens. I am a scholar, athlete, and a leader. I am graduating in the top 10% of my class, and I've had the honor to receive the title of Miss Wingfield. I'm the JRTC Drill Team Commander, and we have recently had the pleasure of going to Biloxi's Keesler Air Force Base to compete against the best of the best. I attended the National Flight Academy located in Pensacola, Florida, and I attended the ICN program at Jackson State University. I have received the Superior Cadet Award for three consecutive years. JRTC does an excellent job with helping me plan for my future from my ninth grade year until my senior year. They have something called the Cadet Development Plan, which tracks everything you do from ninth grade up until your first year of college. It also has something called pitfalls, showing you mistakes that you could make but you shouldn't make. Also, try to make a great score on your ACT and apply for colleges who have what you are looking for. Do you have a good enough ACT to get into that college, and do you qualify for scholarship opportunities? And if so, apply for these scholarship opportunities in a timely manner because they do run out. JRTC has done an excellent job with helping me learn the importance of community service. I have participated in things such as the Stop Hunger Now Food Drive and the Clothing Drive. Also, the Wilkins Elementary Service Learning Project, the Veterans Day Observance. This is very important because we should recognize those who are serving, who have served, and even those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. JRTC has some of the best leadership skills training that JPS has to offer. Things such as Girl State. 
the interdisciplinary program at Jackson State University, where we learned about nanotoxicity, and I received a $2,000 stipend over the course of the summer. The MOWW Youth Leadership Conference, located in Huntsville, Alabama. The National Flight Academy, located in Pensacola, Florida, where I learned about aviation. I even got the chance to plan and fly my own missions. JRTC does a great job with teaching you the importance of employment after high school, whether it's you going into the military, straight into the workforce, or college. How has JRTC prepared me for a successful living after high school? They helped me plan for my future from my ninth grade year until my twelfth grade year. Let me participate in community service where I get the chance to learn outside of the classroom as well as giving back to my community. Give some excellent leadership skills training to prepare me to become a better citizen and employment after high school. I feel that I will make an outstanding employee and an outstanding cadet of the year. You know, Fannie Lou Hamer once said that she was sick and tired. What is it that you're sick and tired of? And how will you use emotional intelligence in order to solve that problem? Emotional intelligence, it just shows you how to control your emotions when you're going through these things and keep pushing forward. You don't want to be the person to fall by the wayside because you're tired of discrimination because it's going to continue to happen. So you have to pick yourself up and continue to work hard and try to push forward through anything, any obstacles. You talk about making yourself better, so how do you think you could make the brigade better, the junior ROTC program better. I want to improve my leadership skills. I have to have good leadership skills to become a brigade commander. And so once I realize what I need to do to become a good leader, then I can begin to lead everyone else in the right direction and trying to get things more organized. You should always be a lifelong learner, especially of leadership. There's a lot written on leadership, a lot you can learn from people to you, which is the most important. Respect. I believe it's respect because before you're a good leader you have to be a good follower so you always have to respect who's ahead of you so once you are in that position you should have the ability to respect others opinions and constructive criticism what was your platform um, when you were running for Miss Wingfield JRTC was a big platform for me it helped me get my name out there to all the other students because every cadet in JRTC has some, a friend or somebody who's not in JRTC. That's how I got my name out there. How do you remain poised? Sometimes these children can succumb to peer pressure. How do you remain poised? Your appearance to other people is very, very important. So you don't want to taint that by succumbing to a peer pressure. So you always have to keep the main important thing on your mind, whether it's you're having fun with your friends or you're just at school, just realizing that there's something more than South Jackson and I want to get somewhere. So I have to be, I have to be that way in order to reach my goals. How do you balance your life? Academics, which has been number one, the most important thing with um, Ms. Wingfield and Junior ROTC, Cadet Battalion Commander. You have to realize, like, if you have track practice and basketball practice on the same day, you need to figure out how you're going to make that work. So being organized is very, very important. Sometimes I might have free time in school and I have work that I need to get done, I do it then. My name is Cadet Ruben Banks and I will be talking to you in briefing about all the places you will go, how JRTC has helped me in my preparedness for a successful living after high school. I'm a junior lead three at the Jim Hill High School. I have a GPA of 4.4. I have an ACT score of 21 and I'm currently working on pushing that to a 25 in February. I am number six of 296 in my junior class, and I'm also vice president of my junior class. The battalion executive officer, which means I am number two of 253 cadets in my battalion. Outside of JRTC, I have attended the SAME, which is the Society of American Military Engineers Camp in Vicksburg, Mississippi, and I'm also a part of the United States Air Force Auxiliary Civil Air Patrol. FEMA's Emergency, National Emergency Management Youth Preparedness Council. JRTC has helped me in the ability to look at problems and situations objectively in the world and predict or determine how choices and decisions can either benefit or injure the world, neighbor, and critical in today's society. There are no excuses. Excuses are tools of incompetent. Those who use them build money and miss nothingness. What you did yesterday influences today and what you did yesterday also influences tomorrow. That is, three days ago, the decisions I made will influence my next second and also tomorrow. JPS, JRTC, Cadet Creed has taught me I do not lie, cheat, or steal, and I always be accountable for my actions and deeds. So my choices, decisions also have consequences. But since being in JRTC, it has helped me become a better leader by understanding that every decision 
has an equal outcome, much like the law of physics. A goal is a dream that is written down. A dream that is not written down is not a goal. Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. After understanding those goals, I must then use management skills, which are planning, research, coordination, and oversight in order to be able to heavily influence those goals in the direction that I want them to go. I am the future of the United States, which is also a part of the Cadet Creed. By being the future, I must understand goal setting and goal making in order to push and help perceive my future. JRTC has helped me in understanding goal setting and management skills to better myself as an individual. Since being JRTC, I have learned about the U.S. Army's real low engineers. I also have learned about successfully finding my career, and one thing is a United States Air Force JAG officer, which is part of the JPS slogan, every scholar, every day is ready for life. And since being in the JRTC, it has made me ready for life, the American way of life, that is. I must understand and seek the matter of leadership, which is a part of the Cadet Creed. In order to be a well-rounded, perfect leader, I must have three skills, but I must also understand my type of leadership skill. My winning color is brown, which means builder. My power words are power, duty, be prepared, and do it my way. Since understanding now that I'm a builder, I'm also able to work with my instructors, my cadre, to strengthen my skills, which means I'm strengthening builder. So I understand my biggest tough issue was delegation, which is a part of the three main goals of leadership. In military customer courtesies, three examples are tradition and custom, personal salutes, cannon salutes, ruffles and flourishes. JRTC has taught me to be a better individual as far as military customer courtesies and understanding as a civilian what the military does and if I do decide to go into the military, what will be to come. In the fifth grade, in 2015, when I graduated Davis Magnet Elementary School, they handed me a book. It was entitled, All the Places You'll Go. That book sits on my nightstand every night and every now and then I decide to flip and look at it. JRTC has not only taught me the Cadet Creed, but also helped me to live by it, and also has truly taught me and helped me understand the places I will go in life. What are you learning from Civil Air Patrol that you not get from ROTC and vice versa? In JRTC, its idea behind is developing leadership as far as citizenship. The idea behind Civil Air Patrol is exposing cadets to new ideas as far as cadet programs, emergency services, and aerospace. What to you is the, is the most important or most critical aspect of leadership? I tell my cadets, I'm a cadet commander for the United States Air Force, if I can't communicate in a direct manner, then something I did wrong as a leader was not communicating to you all. In order to understand why the team exists, which is together everyone achieves more, and the team exists for the region of the mission, in order to complete a mission, I must communicate it. I must be able to explain it. So communication skills is the best thing. If I need to explain it again, ask me again. If I need to say it in Spanish, well, let me translate it. But in order for you to understand exactly what I want you to hear, then I need to be able to express it the way it needs to be said. In the Civil Air Patrol, what position are you, do you hold in that? What leadership position? I hold the positions of Cadet Commander, Squadron NCO, Communications Officer. I'm also Assistant Ground Team Leader. I'm the lowest ranking but most mature cadet in the state of Mississippi. I also am the only one certified in Jackson in a 50 mile radius to qualify as an assistant ground team member. And I'm also qualified to teach even senior members, which are adults. How are you going to manage your time between the two? If I miss a meeting, I have a DCC, which is a deputy cadet commander who already knows what's going on, and I leave him with all the material. I don't mind staying up late and overworking to make sure everyone has what they need and I'm not going to be counting in the prison for it. But I still did my leadership job the day before to make sure everyone understood what to do. And that's the communication skill that comes into play. When you were doing your research in emotional intelligence, what stood out the most when we talk about the four, you know, self-awareness, self-management, uh, so, uh, social awareness and relationship management. Mostly self-management. A big thing is not only does it involve each individual, but now it's being placed in jobs where now it's required that you take emotional intelligence tests and different things. Not only that, but in certain countries required to be in the curriculum of schools. And that surprised me because here in the United States, they say our biggest thing is we don't understand emotional intelligence. We don't have empathy or sympathy for one another because we don't understand how to control our own emotions. How would you persuade business and industry to take a look at West Jackson as a area uh, for investment in order to create jobs. 
in order to explain or express that to business and in industries, we said come to Jim Hill. If you want a hands-on experience of what you're about to embark on as far as taking me into your career field or taking me into your, under your umbrella of work, then you come see what I do at school. You come see what I do in this classroom. The industry leader, he wants to pour his knowledge into me. I need to see what he's about too. Not only do you come visit me, let me visit you. And if I'm not doing exactly what I'm supposed to do, let me see what exactly I'm reaching for over here. Then I'm allowing this student to actually see what exactly he will be doing when it comes to their career point, when it comes to the industry, when it comes to working there. My name is Ladir Eckhart. I am from Lee Pogon High School, Mighty Ram Battalion, officially known as Ram City. I am in the 11th grade. I play baseball, and I am a, a member of the football team, and I also the STEM team. Upon entering JRTC, I felt as if I was walking in circles because I did not know what I wanted to do in life. Leadership and character is how I shape or balance my success with living after high school. It has taught me how to think logically using the acronym SMART, specific, measurable, attainable, realistically, timely. JRTC has also taught me to motivate others to accomplish a certain goal. I feel as if everyone needs a little push to keep on going. JRTC has helped me become a more effective planner. My character. Character is centered around your good reputation as a person. When you have character, you do, you do what's right, when it's right, all the time. Integrity. Integrity is having more principles on what you do no matter who's watching and who isn't. Doing right all the time. Leadership, character, and planning. And planning, JRTC has helped me plan all the way through high school to know what I want to do. And upon graduation, I want to enter the Air Force. It's a step to me becoming an officer in the Air Force. If you had to pick one thing you thought was most important about leadership, what would it be? You were supposed to listen to what everyone has to say. No matter what, what you think about it, you still should get what everyone else thinks um, about the plan or situation. How are you going to expand those as a brigade commander to the rest of the JRTC program about character? Set the example and be yourself at all times and lead people in the right direction. What is the last book you voluntarily read? I'm in an AP English and language class, and it's like a short story, and it's um, The Rock Pile. If you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, stuff bad can happen, and you don't need to, you, you're supposed to listen to your parents automatically, and it was just, don't be disobedient. Describe how you and your peers view law enforcement. Me and my peers, we, everyone has like a bad representation of the police. They think everyone, they, the police wants to do stuff bad to them, but in reality, it's, it's all about what you do that makes the police officer act the way he act. You really just have to deal with it. This program is designed to prepare our students for successful living after high school. And our goal is for 100% of our students to graduate. We are achieving 99% graduation rate. And of those graduates, we expect 100% of them to be accepted to some post high school institution after graduation from high school. Junior ROTC, we are building leaders for life and we're trying to make sure these students have all the tools and attributes necessary for success.